ഫ്ലാ and these dreams have reached all the corners of uh, pakistan you can say because due to these uh, publications which are going around in pakistan um, special print media in some national newspapers some local newspapers some digital media so it's reaching everywhere so today we are here to tell you that uh, the interviews have been published in at least five newspapers and namely they are uh, daily osaf daily askar excuse me right so uh, sorry about the disturbance um, so what i was saying that these interviews of muhammad qasim they have been published in the media in daily osaf daily askar daily akhbar e haq uh, daily azadi and daily khabar ka so uh, since everyone was asking that who is muhammad qasim and when will he show up and why doesn't he come in front of the media and we have been repeatedly saying that muhammad qasim um, doesn't demand fame he doesn't want to be uh, uh shown up in the media he, do, he he doesn't want publicity in that way because all he was doing was to deliver the message of allah and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam which he got through the dreams now one might say that we have quran and sunnah then what are these messages that he's getting from uh, through these dreams so let me clarify something that these messages when we say that we had to deliver these messages to all the pakistani people to the government of pakistan to the army officials to everyone all the muslims in the world basically so the reason is that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in a hadith that true dreams are part of a prophethood and true dreams are 46 part of the nubuwa one of the 46 parts of the nubuwa or prophethood this doesn't mean that uh, the prophethood as we know prophethood or nubuwa is finished is has ended on prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but what what it means sheikh ibn uthaymin he said in his uh, fatawas that this means that man can have true dreams which will bring some warning or some glad tiding so for example something to uh, which is going to happen will be shown to him in advance why a dream it's like parables which angels show to the person who has dreams that's what he said and these dreams can bring glad tidings and these dreams can also bring the warnings so this is why we are sharing these dreams and in another hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it's in ibn majah 1121 that uh when he was in his deathbed and during his last days uh, abdullah bin abbas narrated this he said that uh the nabuwa and its glad tidings there's nothing uh, remaining or nothing remains behind except the dreams true dreams which a muslim sees for himself or muslim sees for him so basically these hadith these hadith they tell us that the dreams can be seen by a man or a person himself for his benefit or he can see dreams for another muslims another muslim so which can benefit other muslims as well so this is what uh, we are trying to uh, propagate basically because dreams are related to the whole ummah they are not just personal dreams some of dreams are personal as well yeah uh, which are related to brother qasim but most of them are related to the condition of ummah and they have warnings and glad tidings within them now uh the most important aspect in these dreams as we know 
and as the interviews have been published in media as well, they are that is the element of shirk. This is the only thing which Muhammad Qasim emphasizes most on, and he stressed most upon this fact that we should avoid shirk and its forms. Not just that, he has been told some amazing modern day examples of shirk by Allah and Muhammad وسلم, in his dreams. So basically the, the shirk is you associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You associate partners in his person and in his, and in his attributes. So this is what we have to avoid. And once we avoid that, we will also achieve success. And more than that, when we say success, that success is not only this world, but the world hereafter as well. So on the day of judgment or res resurrection, on the Yawm al Qiyamah, any person who has done shirk or who has been doing shirk in this world, Allah says he will not forgive shirk, he can forgive any other sin. That's what Allah says in the Quran, that he will not forgive shirk. So that's the purpose of these dreams as well. So they, be they are basically in line with Quran and Sunnah. And what we are telling now through these dreams, and obviously Quran and Sunnah endorse that as well, and they uh, support these dreams, and these dreams fall in line with Quran and Sunnah. So what's happening now is that because most of the politicians, scholars, or uh, the people who, who are running the affairs of Muslim world, they have forgotten the element of shirk. They, they, they just think that uh, avoiding shirk is uh, not associating partners with the person of Allah, like saying someone else is God other than Allah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, that's the main thing. Obviously, that's Tawheed. But there are other forms of shirk as well, which have been uh, told in the hadith and in the uh, traditions of Prophet Wasallam. He even said, uh, there's a hadith in which, uh, uh, in which Hazrat Abu Bakr, anhu, he went to Prophet Wasallam with uh, the Sayyidina Mokal bin Yasar, and they asked Prophet Wasallam. And Prophet Wasallam said to them that, shall I tell you something? Uh, and he was mentioning shirk here. And he said that uh, the shirk is hidden like uh, an ant crawling on a rock in the night time. So imagine, and the, the footsteps of that ant, and the, those footsteps, the line that those footsteps make, it's even thinner than that. And it's in even makhfi or even uh, hidden than that. And it could be in a uh, Muslim as well. So this is why uh, the dua to avoid shirk has been uh, prescribed as well. And in the same hadith, Prophet ﷺ uh, told the dua to Hazrat Abu Bakr and uh, Sayyidina Mokal bin Yasar, both of them, that uh, you should pray that uh, all love, uh, help us to uh, avoid shirk that is hidden and also that which is uh, revealing like which is which can be seen or observed clearly so both forms of shirk has been uh, discouraged in that hadith so now if we move further towards these dreams and their propagation uh, the media interviewed Muhammad Qasim and uh, obviously uh, when they asked Muhammad Qasim different questions, the most, uh, the most important one which he focused on was shirk. And shirk is, avoiding shirk is a key to success not only in, in this world, but also you will achieve success in the hereafter as well, because that's the only thing, if you avoid, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is gonna forgive you and grant you Jannah, because uh, that's what we are striving for after all, we are striving to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and get Jannah in reward or enter the Jannah, enter uh, the paradise. So that's our main objective. But to get to that, there are certain things or criteria which you have to fulfill in this world because Islam is not just um, a way of life like you see in other religions like living like monks, but it is a... Uh, social justice system it, it it implements it develops a society it, it tells you how to deal with other human beings and how to uh, 
how to establish a peaceful society. And we see that uh, in uh, the interviews, Mohammed Qasim repeatedly mentioned to the media that uh, until and unless we avoid shirk, we are not going to be able to establish a peaceful society because that was the only way Prophet Sallallahu established a peaceful society. And uh, that society, not only it was uh, flourishing uh, locally, but you, you can see the effects of uh, Islamic civilization even after the Prophet Sallallahu had left uh, this uh, world. And the Sahaba carried that legacy. But the, what was the most important thing which they uh, propagated and which they uh, forbade others to do, and especially the other uh, people of other nations? They invited them, them to Islam and they invited them. Islam means submitting your will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning you do whatever God Almighty has prescribed for you and you uh, whatever is his commandment, you submit to it. And first of all is submitting to his uh, person and uh, because and accepting that he's the only one God and uh, the only deity worthy of worship. So that's, uh, that is the core of uh, this uh, concept. But then you have other things which you have to implement in, in the society, like, for example, the day and age we are living in today, it's uh, we are surrounded by lots of things like we are surrounded by lots of images statues idols and we are surrounded by things which are probably obscene as well which shouldn't be shown in public or shouldn't be displayed as such and this is what has been told to muhammad qasim in his dreams as well that until and unless the muslim ummah they avoid shirk then Allah's help will not arrive as well and they will remain in darkness forever. When someone, no matter who, whether it's Imran Khan or Tayyab Erdogan or uh, any other ruler, once they implement a system which uh, abolishes shirk, then Allah will give them success. So, because we have seen from the sunnah of all the prophets that the very first message that was sent to the prophets for the people was to avoid shirk and stay firm on Tawheed. Tawheed means uh, oneness of God, believing that God is only one and he's the master of the world, of the universe. So, and uh, and we, we should have this belief that whatever happens, happens with his will and we seek his uh, help and forgiveness in all the matters because we are weak humans and we only worship him. We do not associate partners with him and we do not associate partners in his attributes, saying that, uh, for example, asking someone for help who is other than Allah or asking someone for help who is ghaib or non-present. And, uh, for example, uh, some people, they go to graves and then ask through the graves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is not from sunnah. This is also a form of shirk. And asking for help for anyone other than Allah is also a form of shirk. So that's like, uh, th there are, ulama have divided shirk into two forms, ma major forms, which is uh, shirk -e akbar and shirk -e asghar, uh, which we have discussed in other sessions. But I'm just touching that uh, topic just here, just to give you an idea what uh, shirk is all about and why we should avoid it and why, uh, what it, it can do if we do not avoid and what it can uh, what will happen if we avoid it that's what i was telling you that when all the prophets they abolished shirk and they established tawhid in their society then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gave them success and and he, they, they uh, established societies for example sayyidina ibrahim alayhi salam sayyidina nu alayhi salam uh, uh, muhammad de mustafa sallallahu alayhi wasallam all these prophets they proved with their actions, they abolished shirk, Allah was pleased with them because this world is a test. That's why we are, we are doing this because we have to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he, as a test, we have to, if we have to pass that test, then we have to accept him as a single deity worthy of worship. And he's the only, uh, we have to believe in that. And we have to only uh, submit ourselves to him. 
uh, in his interview, further, uh, uh, Muhammad Qasim was asked about Pakistan because uh, obviously he's in Pakistan and media people, they asked him that, uh, how do you see the future of Pakistan? And uh, obviously we had shared the dreams on media and in other on other public platforms. So they also had an idea what Muhammad Qasim's dreams were about, but they were asking him that how uh, they are going to play an, a role in uh, the future of Pakistan. And then obviously it is as it is in the interview as well, that uh, Pakistan will, the condition of Pakistan will not change until and unless we abolish it, first of all, and then we uh, establish Tawheed. And uh, then uh, here I would mention a dream which was seen on, on the 16th of Jan, 2019, so a few days ago. In that dream, Muhammad Qasim saw that uh, there was uh, basically, He's, uh, he, he, he sees in this dream that many rulers have come, they have ruled over Pakistan, but nothing has changed. Then after that, uh, Imran Khan also came and people were expecting that something miraculous will happen, but nothing happened and nothing changed. So when we say this, that uh, nothing changed, so he's also foreseeing the future as well in this dream. Remember, he's, it's not just talking about present. So probably it's, it's referring to the time which is in near future, a bit far, Allah knows best, we can't tell the exact time. But the dream tells us that even Imran Khan came, but nothing changed. And then he sees that, in that dream he sees uh, the ex-president Asif Zardari, he's angry with the government and he says that, I will not let your government run and I will uh, stop you and I will not spare you for what you are doing. And then after that, Muhammad Qasim says that he's in his house and he comes out of the house and he says to himself that if the circumstances remain the same, then the condition of the country is not going to improve. And then he says that uh, then I, after I come out of the house, then I see that uh, president, ex-president Asif Zardari, he's holding big political gatherings and he's addressing the, his supporters there. And when he sees him talking, then he thinks that, uh, then he thinks that uh, what is going to happen to this country? And not only that, but he, he says that when I'm watching that crowd, he's looking at the political gathering. And then on his right hand side, he sees that the land, which is on his right hand side, it starts uh, becoming flatter and a, a special soil starts getting spread on that land and that that soil keeps spreading spreading uh, to far away distance and then he sees that uh, uh, that soil is so wet from uh, the top and so soft that it's it looks very fertile soil and exactly the same way he can also see in the dream that the soil down below in the depths is also very soft and he sees that uh, it's being spread in a very organized manner. It looks like as if some advanced or some expert expert company is spreading this soil on that land. But that soil keeps spreading. And then he stops looking at that land and that soil and he uh, looks back at uh, Asif Zardari. And then he thinks, after looking at his gathering and after looking at Asif Zardari speaking, then Muhammad Qasim gets a thought in his mind, obviously because these dreams from are from Allah. So he gets a thought in his mind that the way Zardari is speaking, mean uh, now he's speaking and he's addressing the people. Soon it will be my turn to address the people and tell them uh, about different things. And then I have to make preparations and plans about what I need to say and what I shouldn't say to the people. And then he says that, um, then he looks back at the land and that land which is on his right hand side, th there's a manure which is being spread on top of that soil. It looks like as if the land is so fertile, it's so soft and the manure is being spread on top of it. It looks as if it is a, it is a uh, floor of the soil and looks, it looks very uh, pleasing to the eyes and he becomes uh, very content while seeing that soil. And obviously it indicates something that 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making things easier for Muhammad Qasim and as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised as well that his dreams will spread all over the world. So that's what is happening, has started happening. That soil kind of indicates that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making the things easier for him. He's paving the way for Muhammad Qasim um, uh, and his dreams to spread. Uh, so Alhamdulillah, then uh, he then the dream continues. And then he says that I did not pay attention to that soil. Um, and uh, obviously he starts saying that uh, he, he thinks that what he should say and we, he shouldn't say when it's his turn to speak. And then he says after he has seen uh, all this, then he walks away and he enters a small house or a room. And he sees that some people are sitting there already and he starts talking to them. And he said to them that uh, so far, so many rulers have come and they have ruled this country. But if you look at their history, every time a ruler came, the people expected and uh, they were so hopeful that this particular ruler will change the condition of Pakistan and will improve Pakistan. But nothing happened. And then he says to them, those people sitting in a room or a hall like room, that shall I tell you that why it hasn't happened so far? And then he explains to them that the reason the condition of Pakistan and its people has not changed is due to the fact that we haven't abolished shirk and its forms from Pakistan. So this is the key to success. And this is what he has. He tells the people in his dreams as well. And th then he says that this is the only reason not avoiding and abolishing shirk is the only reason that we have this disorder and political chaos in the country all the time. And until and unless uh, we do not abolish shirk, we will not achieve success. And uh, then he also sees that uh, some more people came there and they started listening to his conversation. And then he saw that some army officials, uh, which is interesting, then he saw some army officials also come there and they start listening to his conversation. And they are at a distance from him, and but they are paying all attention, uh, full attention to his conversation. And they're listening to what Muhammad Qasim is saying and suggesting to those people in that uh, room or a hall. Um, then Muhammad Qasim continues and tells those, those people more about, the, about shirk and its forms. Then he says that, then I said that uh, inside the cities on different functions, there are monuments and statues everywhere. Like you see statues and monuments uh, on the roadsides, you see them on the junctions, you see them on the roundabouts, you see them in the parks, like you have uh, in um, Lahore uh, next to the Badshai Masjid, Badshai Mosque, uh, the, uh, next to Minare Pakistan, there are statues there as well. So all are forms of shirk. And then he also explained to them that you have different kind of pictures posted in the cities, walls, and on the shops and everywhere you see that there are unnecessary pictures which are not even needed. And some of them obviously, as we know, uh, that they are not even uh, able to be shown to uh, your family. Some of them are like that. So uh, then he says to the people that Prophet Muhammad also destroyed all such kind of idols and statues to eliminate shirk. When we abolish all these idols and uh, all these forms of shirk, then only Allah's help will arrive. So when we abolish shirk, then only Allah's help will arrive. Until then, if you think or if you say that uh, a particular leader, Imran Khan or Nawaz Sharif or Zardari or anyone will change the condition of Pakistan. So this will not happen, not at all. Until we abolish shirk, nothing is going to happen. Any one of them, whoever abolishes shirk, he will be able to change the condition of Pakistan. But the shirk and its forms have to be abolished at the state level. <laughs> then Muhammad Qasim further explains in this dream. Then I saw myself uh, sitting in a, a live interview and the host asked me about shirk and its forms. Uh, so basically host asked him that the pictures are a necessity in this day and life, in this day and age. So how can we avoid pictures? 
then he explained to that host as well that where they are not necessary, we should not use them. If they are needed or if they are like mandatory, then we can use them because nowadays uh, uh, there are different requirements, the technological developments due to all this and due to the fact that uh, to make human lives easier, we, have, we can use uh, certain forms of picture. For example, you go to a university or you go, go to a government department and they ask you for, a, for an ID card. It makes their life easier as well and your life easier because it has been issued by the government. Your picture is there and your uh, ID card number is there. Similarly, you can, when you go to an institution or workplace, uh, you have ID cards at workplace with your picture on them. That also, has also improved the security of the people so that no intruder gets into a university or in a workplace or in a government uh, department. So this also improved the security. So it benefits the human being. So why not? Yes, you can use pictures there. Uh, then he continues that uh, you have currency notes as well, where you are allowed to keep pictures because obviously there are pictures on the currency notes. So that's fine because that's the currency of your time. Uh, the time you're living in. But apart from this, any unnecessary images or pictures, they all should be avoided and they all should be removed from all over the cities and wherever they are. And he also says to that host that some people, they uh, post or they put the pictures of the celebrities or in the rooms or in the houses. This is not permissible as well. You are, you, you're raising someone to his uh, status, which he doesn't deserve and especially you're putting uh, a statue and an image in your room or in your house to glorify him. So this is not allowed as well because if you look at the human history, how the shirk was started, um, it started the, with a picture or an image and it was started by the, at the time of Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. I mean the, the people of the Nuh alayhi salam, they started using uh, pictures to glorify the, uh, their ancestors. So the ancestors were pious people. So they were like, we, we should pay tribute to them. And they uh, put some pictures there. And then later on, the, the images, when I say pictures, at that time, technology was not there, but there were images of their ancestors. And then those images converted into idols and statues. And that's how shirk started. So this is why. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentions in the Quran as well that uh, he will forgive any sin but he will not forgive shirk because that's the only purpose of our life in this world. It's just a test. It's just a test but that test is quite testing actually. So basically we need to obey the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be successful at the individual level and at the state level. So um, so we have to avoid all forms of shirk. And uh, then he continues his conversation with the host. And then host, uh, then he tells that, uh, Muhammad Qasim tells the host that uh, if you see there are pictures of uh, famous television hosts or anchor persons in the promo of their program. So they don't need to put that picture there. They are, it's just that a human being is glorified Obviously, that, that's uh, my interpretation that or the meaning of this uh, statement in this dream is that you are just glorifying a, a human being so much that uh, uh, which may lead to you, lead you to other evils as well, because you kind of fall into shirk and you start praising people instead of praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you, do, you have to be, uh, uh, say, in the middle path. We, we shouldn't be on extremes. And then he says to the anchor person that those uh, host television hosts or anchor persons who are not famous, they can put their pictures in their promo, but those who are famous, they don't need to because it's uh, not necessary for them to do so. They are already well known. And uh, he also mentioned in this stream that uh, those people who are in the photography business, it's okay for them to uh, put some certain kind of pictures just to show uh, what kind of uh, pictures they can uh, provide to the customers. 
uh, especially when there are government requirements, you have passports, you have ID cards, you have all sorts of uh, different requirements. So uh, you have to avoid you have to avoid all those kind of uh, pictures which are not allowed. So then um, he continues uh, with the with that dream that. Um, he, he sees in his dream that uh, army officials are continuously watching all this from a distance and they're also listening to his conversation carefully where they are paying attention to his conversation and they're listening to it very carefully so hey, hey uh, the, the the point to be noted is that uh, obviously uh, some people were saying that oh who is Muhammad Qasim and he's hiding and maybe he's just a name a pen name or a digital name but now you can see he appeared in dig, uh, digital media and the print media and even he I narrated a dream of his to you just now uh, which that the dream mentions that uh, when Muhammad Qasim is speaking to media then uh, army officials are also listening the media persons are also listening and obviously when it comes into media the people are also listening so uh, so far, if he didn't come in the media, that he didn't want uh, fame or he didn't want himself to be portrayed as something big. All he was doing is to propagate the message which he has been delivered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa That was the whole purpose of uh, spreading these dreams. And uh, uh, now when it's the time with the, uh, by the will of Allah, and by the mercy of Allah, he, he he has come out in the media and he is showing himself to everyone. So this dream tells you that he's talking to a live, uh, in a, to a host as well. So that means, that could mean, just mean that he's talking to media people and telling you, which has already happened as well. Uh, so, and it will happen more in the future as well, inshallah. So this is the, because these dreams are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this will happen by the mercy of Allah. Uh, as I mentioned in my start, uh, in the start of my conversation, that why Muhammad Qasim's dreams? And uh, the, the, one thing I would like to mention here, I mentioned some hadith, uh, a couple of hadith, a hadith to you that uh, from a hadith, how we uh, know that these dreams or dreams of a Muslim uh, bring glad tidings or warnings for other Muslims and they are 46 part of the Nabuwa. They are uh, they are true, they are uh, so true but they are not Nabuwa because Nabuwa has ended on Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then another point, important point from Quran is that the story of Yusuf Alayhi Salam in Quran in verse number 43 of Surah Yusuf in which Allah mentions the dream of a non-believing Egyptian king and how his dream helped his kingdom to uh, save themselves from a famine and a calamity. So basically when he saw that dream in which he saw seven lean cows, weak cows eating seven fat cows, then uh, he uh, was very worried and he narrated this dream to the people of his uh, palace and he asked for the interpretation. No one could give him a satisfactory answer. And then they went to uh, Prophet Yusuf salam because they knew that he could predict the, he, he could tell the uh, interpretation of the dreams. And when he interpreted, uh, interpreted that dream, then this saved his kingdom from a famine and a, a big trial. So here, the important point to be noted is that even the Quran, the Quran itself mentions the dream of a non-believing Egyptian king. At that time, those Egyptians used to worship idols and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning his dream himself in the Quran. So dreams are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. Like there are three uh, kinds of dreams. One from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, good dreams. The others, uh, you, you see that there are dreams which are related to your normal life like you do something in your normal life and then you see the dreams and the third kind of dreams you have from shaitan many people uh, they without in ignorance and in arrogance they start calling muhammad qasim's dreams a fitna and a uh,
pious. And then his dreams, if you examine them, they do not go against the Quran and Sunnah. Rather, and some people also accuse that it's a shaitani fitna and things like that. And then we ask them that what kind of uh, uh, message is shaitan telling us to uh, avoid the shirk? And is he telling us to uh, avoid shirk? Do not associate partners with Allah and his in his person and his, in his attributes and you will become successful. What kind of people are you? And I mean, what kind of logic is this? So we should be careful before making such statements. And best thing is to go back to the authentic scholars. As uh, I mentioned, uh, the, the, the one of the interpretation of a scholar, Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen, in, in my talk, where he uh, explained what the dream, uh, dreams mean. Uh, for example, he explained the hadith in which it is uh, said, Prophet ﷺ said that dreams are one of the 46 parts of Nabuwa. So he explained that what it means. It means that they are so true that they are close to Nabuwa, means that they tell you about something or the angels show that person something. They are like parables shown by angel to given by angels to that person, telling him about something in the future or uh, something good which is going to happen or some warning. And you have you must have met many people. I've come across many people, even the non-Muslims, they tell us that they have seen dreams and that it happened. So dreams are not, it's, they can be from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And especially a Muslim's dream, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that uh, a Muslim, uh, there's nothing remained behind from Nabuwa, but a true dream which a Muslim sees for himself or another Muslim sees for him. So we, and he also said at the end of this hadith, that uh, he was saying to the Muslims, giving the message to the Muslims, that when you prostrate or when you do sajda, do dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So same thing we have been telling you uh, repeatedly and time and again, every time we did a session, that we tell you to prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to bow down to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him to show you the reality about these dreams. And even if you don't... Uh, or give you guidance about these dreams or give you uh, to tell you to, to show you the uh, to show you the right path or to uh, to enlighten with you enlighten you with knowledge about the dreams and their importance because even if you we do not ask you to believe in Muhammad Qasim's dreams as such but you have to examine them under the criteria of Quran and Hadith whatever is given in Quran and Hadith and with the understanding of uh, the great scholars, what they have said about the dreams, even in, uh, it is mentioned about uh, Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi, that he saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, 99 times in his dreams. And then he saw, uh, he said that he saw for the hundredth time as well. So even about him, it is mentioned and you can have, true dreams from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't look at your attire, especially the age and time we are living in, the, the age of fitna, that uh, some people think that if someone has beard, then he's very pious and uh, someone who doesn't have beard, he's uh, you can belittle him or he's lesser Muslim than others. Well, beard is a, an obligatory thing, but it doesn't uh, mean that the person who has beard is the most truthful. And he will only have true dreams and he will, he's the, uh, you can say, he has authority over others. The, the, the criteria given by Hadith about having true dreams is that uh, those who are most truthful in speech, they will have most true dreams. That's what it is said in Hadith of Prophet, Prophet Wasallam, That those who are truthful in, most truthful in speech, they will have the most truthful dreams. So that's the criteria. For example, if you look at the history of Pakistan, uh, uh, Pakistan is said to be the dream of who? Alama Muhammad Iqbal. And we all know how great of a scholar he was, uh, what a great man he was, and how his uh, kalam or poetry lifted the whole Muslim Ummah from Iran to Central Asia, to Afghanistan, to Pakistan, everywhere. And still he's remembered as a great man. Even in India, they also praise him as a great man.
because he lifted the nation. And it is said that Pakistan was a dream of Iqbal as well. Means that he saw some dream in which he was shown that there will be a uh, state established in, in this land of Hind, which will be in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why he has been shown that dream. And then you, if further, if you see the person who fought the case of Pakistan with the British and other uh, uh, people, other parties who were involved, like Indians, he was Muhammad Ali Jinnah. And he didn't have beard or he wasn't uh, known to be a very pious person. On the other hand, you had Mulana Muhammad Ali Johar, who was striving for the Khilafat movement. And he was striving for the Khilafah to be established uh, or to be restored. But the thing is, whatever he was doing was right for himself. And he was doing the right thing. But if you look at the uh, outcome, he was trying to restore the Khilafah, which was in uh, the Ottoman Empire. And he was trying to restore it in Hind. Whereas not understanding the whole concept of uh, or the the scenario of the land at that time. Whereas Allah had another plan and Allah uh, chose a man from within uh, th those people who didn't have, didn't have beards or who didn't, who were not very pious uh, as per se, like according to the scholars. And we know what they did to Muhammad Ali Jinnah and how they talked about him, but he still continues and he uh, understood Quran. He, Muhammad Ali Jinnah mentioned many times that until this Pakistan is a laboratory of Islam, until we do not establish Islam in it, we will not uh, flourish. So we must obey the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. And that's how Allah, when he wants to do something, he can take work from anyone. He doesn't look at your face. And he, when he intends to forgive someone, he can use Muhammad Ali Jinnah, he can use Iqbal. When the enemy were, enemies were looking at Muhammad Ali Johar and uh, other scholars of that time that they, they are a threat to them. Allah chose some other people who in appearance looked, who didn't have beards, what I mean to say. And then Allah used them to establish a state in the name of Islam. And that state, uh, further confirmed by Muhammad Qasim's dream, is the dua or the prayer of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The dream which he saw on 6th June, uh, in June 2006, uh, in which he, uh, I think it was 2006, I'm not sure about the month, um, in which he saw that he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Oh Allah, why have you created Pakistan? Every kind of evil is there. Every kind of voice is present there. There is no peace, no prosperity, no uh, justice. There is so much injustice and evil is everywhere. Then uh, Allah said to Qasim that, Qasim, when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in this world, then he used to make dua to me. The Allah, towards the end of the time or towards the uh, near the Qiyamah, establish a state uh, which will, from where Islam will rise and spread all over the world. And Qasim, I accepted the dua or prayer of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I decided to make Pakistan. So Pakistan is also a will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one can undo it. So even though the dreams indicate that uh, the enemy will try to weaken it, but they will not try to, they will not be able to uh, destroy Pakistan um, and uh, Pakistan will flourish. Pakistan will rise, but only with the, the key to success is eliminate shirk first of all, eliminate all kind of shirk from your uh, personal life and from your for, and at the state level and in your surroundings then we will be successful no doubt and uh, then we will have a, a financial system which will be interest free we will have Adhan and Eid at the same time we will have uh, a financial system which will be a social justice system we will have such a uh, system of good governance and justice that even the non-Muslims will migrate to Pakistan and start living here. All the sects will be abolished. There will be no fighting over with each other over the ideologies or over the, the personal opinions or on the, 
opinions of different scholars and uh, this is all will happen when we inshallah when we establish tawhid in pakistan that is the key to success without that we are not going to go anywhere and uh, i would like to uh, end my talk here and we will take any questions uh, here from the audience because uh, if, if someone has questions then we can uh, answer those questions <laughs> um yes yeah, some okay uh, some people have asked some uh, personal questions from brother qasim uh, and they prayed for him to uh, do umrah or hajj and uh, things like that and jazakallah khair and if there's any other questions i can i'll also throw light on that but obviously the 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 purpose of this session was to tell you about the interviews which have been published in the media muhammad qasim is in the media now those people who used to um uh, uh use his uh, images as a tool to defame him you 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 guys stand nowhere now because muhammad qasim has himself come out in the media uh, by the mercy of allah subhanahu wa taala and now all the media and in uh, the people of pakistan have seen him they have uh, seen that he's uh, what are his views what he has expressed in the media and what is the most important message in his dreams and how we can achieve success that's what we have discussed so far anyways so uh, this is the uh, this is basically um, the core concept of these dreams and uh, th this is what we want to tell everyone that if you avoid shirk at personal level and uh, the, at the state level you will be able. what what here we would like to suggest something i think time and again whenever someone asks us a question they repeat the same question uh, even if you tell the answer they would still ask you the same question we don't mind answering you like when we meet people personally or they ask you on the social media the thing is that you guys have to take some time out and study about shirk and its forms first and foremost shirk and its forms and then uh, you also have to study what islam or what quran and hadith say about the dreams and don't just read the hadith and uh, start bombarding it at others that oh this hadith reads that and uh, because when you read the hadith then you start giving your own opinion on that hadith that this means that this could mean that whereas you need to see the opinion of the authentic scholars and the sahaba first of all because they are the ones uh, after prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they are the ones who understood islam better than us uh, better than anyone else and then you go to tabe'in tabe tabe'in and then you go to the authentic scholars which have been uh, there all the time Uh, different uh, scholars I, i wouldn't name anyone here because otherwise people label you uh, with a sect that oh he's mentioning this name or this scholar so he belongs to this sect whereas it's not the case as i said to you in my talk that uh, muhammad qasim and we who, who support him we do not belong to any sect we do not belong to any division any organizations all we are doing is that we are delivering the message of allah and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam which has been delivered to muhammad qasim in his dreams to the people and now uh, again i would remind you don't start judging us when we say that when we say that we are delivering the message this message means what prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said dreams are 46 part of nabuwa so this message is in the dreams and they are we they are so important the dreams that they are close to nabuwa yet they are not nabuwa so bear in mind that's why we are uh spreading these dreams as well because if, when a muslim sees a dream as the hadith says that uh nothing remains behind of nabuwa other than a dream a good dream which a muslim sees for himself or another muslim sees for him um so when another muslim sees a dream for you he will obviously narrate that to you he will obviously spread that to you exactly the same way when one muslim muhammad qasim sees a dream about pakistan about the middle east about the rest of the ummah then he will spread it and tell them that this is what he has seen in the dream and more so because 
uh, in his case, he has spoken to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for more than uh, 300 times with Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and five, more than 500 times uh, he has communicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obviously, I would like to clarify that he has not seen Allah or even Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he's in front of him, he's uh, standing there with respect and he doesn't raise his head to look into the face of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says that only once he looked into the eyes of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they were filled of noor as if uh, Allah has filled all the noor in his eyes. So that was the feeling of Muhammad Qasim when he looked into the eyes of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he also says that when he's talking to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his dreams, it is as if there is noor everywhere. Like there is noor and he's speaking to noor with respect. And uh, he's standing there and he's uh, listening to and speaking to uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's such a feeling, such a great feeling that he explains um, to everyone. Uh, so, so basically, uh, what I was saying that you guys those who do not understand uh, the concept of dreams Islamically, you have to go back to the uh, book, for example, the Hadith and Quran, Quran Surah Yusuf, uh, verse number 43, and how Yusuf Islam saved the kingdom. Hadith, I've told you Muslim 4200, uh, Bukhari 6499, uh, then there are other Hadiths in Muslim and Bukhari about dreams. You have to see all of them to develop a better understanding. But don't just take pick a hadith and make your own meanings and start arguing with others. Whereas you have to see what authentic scholars, like especially first of all the Sahabas, Tabin, Tabi Tabins, and then great scholars of our times, like um, any great scholars, what they have said about those dreams. And you have to understand with the understanding of the knowledgeable people, because Islam also tells us that if you do not have knowledge, Go and ask someone who has knowledge and do not just uh, uh, start making your own meanings and start uh, talking against the dreams of Muhammad Qasim because the ahadith in Quran tell us otherwise. So you have to take care of that as well. Um, so the thing is that um, basically uh, there are people who are asking uh, about the Mazar. Uh, there's a question, ke, uh, please, Mazar ke baare mein batai. A brother said, uh, okay, so Mazar is a shrine which are found everywhere in Pakistan, in Lahore, in all the cities of Pakistan. Well, basically, there, there were pious people who were buried there. But the Quran and Hadith, Prophet Sallallahu especially told us that uh, the people before you, he said to Sahaba, they used to glorify the graves and they fall, fall into shirk. They fell into shirk. So do not do the same with me as well. So similarly, these people in Pakistan or India or everywhere, uh, they have glorified the shrine so much that some of them even bow down to them. They put their heads down. And even there is a dream of Brother Qasim, which talks about the Prime Minister of Pakistan, which we have shared on our channels as well. Prime Minister of Pakistan, Imran Khan, he bowed down. Some people say, no, he put the hand down and then he put his head down. But who said you can put the, even the hand down and the head on top of it? Where is this coming from? This is not from uh, the Sunnah of Prophet ﷺ. This sajda tazimi was or prostration out of respect is nowhere in Islam. Even the scholars of that particular uh, ideology or sect, they even dismiss, many of them, they say that uh, sajda tazimi or bowing down to a grave or shrine is not allowed. But generally, you can go there and make dua as it is told in Sunnah that when you, uh, the, the duas which are told in the hadith, when you visit graves, or you should visit graves, and when you visit graves, then pray for the deceased. Yeah, that, that's a different thing. But anyone who dies, there are three things which benefit him. The pious children, 
the beneficial knowledge he has left behind and anything uh, sadqa jariya means a continuous reward for example if that plant uh, the, that person planted a tree or he uh, he invested in a well or tube well or anything which is giving water to the people or a plant or which becomes a tree and then it gives shadow to the people after he has left this world then he will keep getting reward for that similarly a dad will have reward of his pious children and uh, when they make dua for him especially hadith says pious children who make dua for him when they make dua for him so pious children when they do righteous things and they do dua for him that reward he will also get even there are other ahadith which say that you should build a well for uh, your father if he has deceased or any one mother or th- th- there are certain things which are explained in details in ahadith and uh, obviously beneficial knowledge which he has left behind uh, which is benefiting people then uh, yes sure definitely that will uh, keep uh, he will keep getting reward for that other than this uh if you go there and bow down to a grave or shrine this is shirk this is clearly shirk because uh, even muhammad qasim this is shirk according to quran and hadith there is a lecture on shirk on this same channel muhammad qasim uh, uh which is uh, exactly the sh- how we can uh, how the muslim ummah can come out of darkness i think its title is and uh, what is the key to success and there's a lecture on shirk where we explained all the forms of shirk and we explain the modern uh, day examples of shirk uh, as well in there so th- this shrine just for making dua mazar if you go to a mazar and make dua that's fine but if you pay uh, too much tribute or if you give respect to someone this is also opinion of scholars i'm not saying from myself that giving too much respect to someone which in a way that only allah deserves that is also a form form of shirk so you do not go to extremes so if if a pious person is buried there you just make dua and leave from there you do not uh, like uh, uh, start making other rituals there and start practicing things which are not approved by ahadith and quran and uh, which is not from the sunnah of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam um here i think we uh, i'm i'm just going as i have discussed in in my conversation that what muhammad qasim tells the, the media persons about shirk so refer back to that as well and there's a lecture on this muhammad qasim channel this where i'm addressing you from uh, there's a lecture on shirk you can see that as well because in that we have discussed different modern day examples of shirk which even some of the scholars don't follow these days so we have to avoid that form of shirk and when the, it involves uh sharing a for example image or some face or some face which is not re- a real face but it looks like a face and you are trying to you share that to express your feelings things like that is also not allowed and this is what has been taught to muhammad qasim in his dreams as well so yeah pay attention to that and uh, see it's really interesting actually when you see uh, that lecture what has been taught to muhammad qasim by allah and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam about shirk and what things he should avoid and what he shouldn't and all those modern day examples of shirk if you listen to that then you will uh, realize that they make sense as well alhamdulillah uh, uh someone said that he is a graphic designer so what should he don't now in this regard graphic designing is something obviously there are different forms of graphic as well it's not per se we can't say that oh graphic designing is not allowed well you can do many things which can be beneficial beneficial for the people and which can make it easier for the people as we have said even about the f- photography that if you are in the business of photography and it's a requirement of uh the government as well you as well it improves your security improves the condition of human beings it improves the living standards then yes you do adopt it and uh, things like that you yes you you can do that but if you go into details if it involves only uh, glorifying some person 
and too much glorifying uh, something, then that's not allowed as well. So you, basically, uh, as a, as a common general rule, if you if you if you pay attention to your inner to your nafs, whenever you are going to do something wrong, but the condition the the, the uh, is that you must be offering salah five times. If you offer salah five times, then you will have that light in your heart. That when you do something wrong, it will kind of uh, click in your heart that oh, sh should I do that or should I not do that. But most of the times, people seem to uh, ignore that feeling. That oh okay, it's okay. Let's do it. You know, they don't stop when the heart stops them. It, sometimes your inner self is also telling you what to do and what not to do. Uh, basically, when you do something wrong, and that's a natural uh, thing which Allah has placed in your heart by His mercy, so that you do not do anything wrong. But we kind of ignore that feeling. Those who pay attention and those who pay uh, attention to the creation of Allah and those who pay attention to themselves and Allah has repeatedly mentioned in the Quran as well look at your hands look at your face like look at your features how we have designed you and uh, um, th there's goodness in everything so if you do something which is unnatural or which is harmful for you then uh, by the mercy of Allah it clicks in your mind even the non-muslims they have also made standards like for example health and safety and they have uh, there are lots of them are uh, now making standards or rules which are in line with Islam which never existed before in their lives but they have taken it from Muslims and Islam and they're implementing them in their societies but and they have flourished they have made their societies a, a welfare society but what's lacking there even there what is lacking is the element of Tawheed and what is lacking is uh, and what's the most uh, worrying thing is they are not avoiding shirk because they do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as one God. The, they associate partners as well. But whenever they try to do something which falls in line with the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Quran as well, and Quran as well, or whatever message Allah has revealed before as well. So if they try to implement that, then it brings peace in their lives. So that's what Islam is. Submit your will, will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Islam is from the word sal, salam or salm, which is like submitting yourself to, like you use taslim as well. Uh, sometimes some people, which means like uh, sub, submission to something. Uh, exactly like that. When you submit yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he will give you peace in your life. But the eternal peace and the, uh, the the key to success is to avoid shirk and abolish it at all the levels. Especially as a Muslim, we have better understanding of what shirk is and what uh, what falls under shirk and what doesn't fall under the shirk. Um, so that's what we should avoid, obviously, uh, above all. And if there are any other questions, please, you can send it and I'll... Uh, answer them. I'll try and answer them by the help of Allah, inshallah. Um, okay. Um, yes. Yeah, inshallah. Uh, we will. Uh, yeah, we will keep doing live sessions, inshallah. Um, and some people are okay uh, saying salam to brother Qasim. Uh, brother Qasim is here. He's also participating in the live uh, chat and he's replying to the comments of uh, the participants. Anyone who ever wants to speak to brother Qasim is there to uh, reply to your greetings and salams, inshallah. Um, but our main objective of this talk was to just to let you know that. Our interviews have been, obviously, Brother Qasim's interviews have been published in the media and uh, they have been uh, sent, obviously, when, when they are published in media, then they go to the government officials as well. They go to army officials. They come in the uh, front. They, 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 they are being shown everywhere and they are being observed. And 
um, looked carefully into by the authorities as well. So uh, if someone, obviously, as I said, like there are dreams about uh, Imran Khan, Prime Minister of Pakistan. There are, there's a recent dream which I narrated today, especially all of it. That is about when Muhammad Qasim is speaking about shirk and media people are listening to it. Besides the media, the army officials are also listening to it. So when we say the army officials are listening to it, there's a meaning to it. This dream was seen on the 16th of Jan. And Alhamdulillah, as far as I know, yes, they are um, listening to his conversations. And even though, uh, as he sees in the dream that they are at a distance and they are listening very carefully. So Alhamdulillah, that's what, because that's what we are trying to do. Uh, in one of the dreams uh, in December 2016, um, in which Brother Qasim saw that, uh, Allah said to uh, Brother Qasim that until the news of your dreams reaches the army chief of Pakistan and, lis and he listens to them carefully and believes in them, then once he does that, then Prophet Muhammad wasallam will give witness to the army chief in his dream that Qasim's dreams are true and they are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And exactly those things will happen which have been shown to Qasim in his dreams. And that's what we are trying to do. That once the news reaches, then and once the army chief believes in his dreams, then he will get a witness by a dream by the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then there will be uh, the circumstances in Pakistan will change because after that the shirk will be abolished and abolished and all the evils um, which exist in our society or all the disorders they, everything will be in order and everything will be corrected after that inshallah but the key to success again the first of all we will abolish shirk at all the levels but before we do that at the state level the people have to themselves do this in their individual lives as well. They should at least try because it, uh, because when you start doing something good, and there is there are the waswasas of shaitan as well. So you have to fight with those waswasas and you have uh, to fight those waswasas with the uh, Quran, the surahs of the Quran. You, and you have to uh, remind, keep reminding yourself that you have to avoid these forms of shirk. Um, let alone what has been told to Brother Qasim in his dreams, the modern day examples, even if you try to avoid shirk what is uh, mentioned in uh, different forms of shirk mentioned by the scholars or in hadith, even then you will uh, get guidance and then you will understand that whatever is told in Qasim's dreams is also a part of that and because we are living in a time when where all different kinds of shirk exist, we didn't exist before and then we have to examine those different forms of shirk um, uh, carefully with the knowledge which has been passed to us. And especially when it said that dreams, it is said that dreams are 46 parts of Nabuwa. Obviously, Nabuwa has ended. But through these dreams, when Allah and Prophet are telling us the modern day examples of shirk, then we have to avoid them as well. Because when we are telling someone to avoid these kind of shirk, it's not there's no personal uh, gain in it or there's no personal objective here. What we are trying to do is to improve the society, improve the way people think and improve their, uh, their uh, basically the ideology of the people because once they start uh, uh, once they start avoiding shirk, then they will also be able to uh, stop themselves from the other evils and that's what we have been saying time and again, even in this conversation, that when we say it's the key to success means when you avoid shirk, then you will also be able to do other things. You have avoided shirk, then you will try to improve your financial system. You will try to improve uh, the uh, your technology. You will try to improve your uh, scientific developments and infrastructure, roads and whatnot then there will be blessing and mercy of Allah. When you avoid shirk, when we say it's the key to success, then this, this will all will happen. Until then, 
if you do not avoid shirk there will be no success or there will be no technological uh, technological uh, developments or there will be no scientific developments or uh, uh, you will not be able to stand uh, in front of your enemies with confidence because you are kind of bowing down to a system which has been uh, made by someone and then you are following that system and until and unless you don't abolish shirk at that level as well you will not be able to uh, compete with their with your rivals as well so this is the main thing that uh, pakistan or the muslim ummah will remain in darkness if they if they do not avoid shirk and if they avoid shirk then they will come out of this darkness they will spread the peace of islam first of all pakistan will become such a progressive and uh, developed country that we will make from a needle to a space shuttle everything ourselves and not only that such a system of good governance and social justice will be formed that the non muslims from rest of the world they will start and uh, coming to pakistan and start living there as well and obviously we know that when we uh, spread dreams of brother qasim there are many non muslims as well who are uh, who have paid attention to these dreams and as i mentioned in my previous talks that uh, when we spread these dreams to non muslim when the time comes they will also become muslim and they will enter islam because they will see that these dreams are from allah subhanahu wa taala and whatever the lifestyle has been uh, prescribed or uh, mentioned in uh, quran and hadith that is the best way of life that is the way only way of life actually and uh, and this will also help the non muslims to become muslims because when they will see brother qasim's dreams coming true and they they will be published in the media as well as allah has promised and that uh, thing has started already so when they will publish and people will see they will start entering islam as well and peace will spread everywhere and pakistan will become a very developed country as well so, um, so much so that it uh, it will have its own space shuttles and everything um, and also there, there is a mention of in this interview which brother qasim gave to um, the media there will allah subhanahu wa taala will give pakistan 3000 black fighter jets these black fighter jets will be the most advanced aircraft of the world and they will be the ones uh, which are unbeatable and uh, due to with the help of those black fighter jets we will also free kashmir before ghazwa hind so even before ghazwa hind happens kashmir will be free free because of these black fighter jets because these fighter jets will be so advanced and uh so modern that no other fighter jet will stand in front of them and so much so that when we uh conquer or when we take kashmir back india will not be able to uh, retaliate or attack pakistan uh, alone and then as we know from the dreams that the other things will happen uh india will attack pakistan when it has support of uh usa and other allies allies and then they will attack pakistan and pakistan will still be victorious due to these black fighter jets and not only against india then these black fighter jets will uh, jump into middle east and uh, we will defeat russia and america so russia will be defeated america usa will be defeated in the middle east uh, when we jump into the middle east using these black fighter jets um and then we will take our lost territories back and we will regain the lost areas and uh, the the true and peaceful islam of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam will spread all over the world and uh, all of the middle east will also become part of the pakistan indonesia and malaysia and uh, other muslim countries like uh, brunei indonesia malaysia those eastern uh, regions they will also join pakistan when pakistan jumps into the middle east to fight the superpowers and once they defeat those two superpowers obviously pakistan will become a superpower alone in the world and uh, with the help of those black fighter jets uh, no one will be able to stand in front of them and as we know from the history as well that even when pakistan um, obviously if you look back 40 50 years back or 
within this time. Everyone knows that Pakistani Air Force pilots are, are very skillful. Regardless of what kind of fighter jets they have, they are very, very skillful and they have proved time and again in uh, the battlefields as well, in the combats as well. So they have um, fought an enemy which was in uh, greater in number, like which was more than double than them, but they have tackled the enemies, they have uh, their, their skills, like we know from M.M. Alam, he shot, I think, five uh, fighter aircraft of the enemies within a few seconds or minutes, less than two minutes, I think it is said. So then there are many other as well. There are, I think, people who also fought against uh, other, like who, who shot down other Israeli air jets um, in the Arab-Israeli conflict when Syrians had the fighter aircrafts, but they didn't have skilled pilots. So then Pakistani pilots went there and they defended the Arab lands at that time as well. So there's a bit of history behind this as well. That um, And th this is the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is training the people of Pakistan uh, when they show intent. Like, as we know, our army air force is very professional. And when, when they try to do, when you try to do something good, like you establish a professional uh, institution like Air Force or Army, then Allah will also help you. He will help you more than what you do. But when you have, uh, whereas on the other side, if you look at the political system, when you have uh, corruption and uh, uh, you let the enemies to uh, contaminate the food of your army with some chemicals, then obviously you will have disgrace and you, you you will have you will see bad times in your lives because um you are letting the enemies to overcome you because you are not sincere to your country and people and you're not doing enough for them you're not uh providing food and shelter to the poor and you are uh, and the poor people in the country are oppressed and uh, might is right is ruling everywhere and that's the culture in Pakistan, wherever you go. So until and unless we try and stop that, nothing is going to change. And how we are going to try and stop that? First, we have to come on a pl common platform, like uh, call each other to a thing which is common amongst us, which is the element of shirk. Because all Muslims, no matter which, unf unfortunately, we are divided into sects, different sects, no matter which sect you belong to, but we all know that avoiding shirk is the key to success and we all should avoid shirk. So when we try to avoid shirk, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us as well. Exactly the way when we try to uh, become more professional in, uh, in our air force or army or other departments, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps. So similarly, when we try to become more professional uh, on the state level and individual level, which is by avoiding shirk, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us then as well. And he will grant us treasures from somewhere we can't even imagine. He will grant us those things which we have never thought of. Like as uh, Brother Qasim sees, saw in his dreams as well, that when uh, Pakistan starts developing and flourishing, then... Uh, Allah bestows his mercy upon Pakistan and its people, then we pay back all the debt as well. Not only that, we become self-sufficient self and we become a highly developed nation so that uh, we can compete with many other nations. Obviously, you have to think that if when Ghazwai Hind happens, India, USA and their allies and many other countries will attack Pakistan uh, altogether. So, Imagine, it means Pakistan will have become something very big, a big economy as well. And then uh, to defeat those, all those enemies who are attacking you simultaneously and they are allies of each other. And to defeat them, you will have to have a strong economy, strong defense and everything else. It's not like it's, it's, not like it's just going to be miracles. Obviously, when uh, you abolish shirk, you make technological and scientific developments, you make uh, 
good arms and ammunition, you make good fighter aircrafts or the black fighter jets which we have mentioned when you get them by the mercy of Allah then when you enter the battlefield no one will be able to stop you that's because you have abolished shirk and then you are trying to spread peace on the earth or on the land and you will see that in the coming days <laughs> the enemies will show their real intent against Pakistan and you will see that uh, even at the time of Ghazwa Hind, Pakistan or Muslims will not want to attack or will not want war because that's what Islam is. We do not want war. But when it is imposed upon us, then we will definitely retaliate. And, and if we retaliate when we have abolished shirk, all its forms, and we have developed a society which is full of justice, social justice and equality, and uh, which gives rights to all kind of human beings, whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims, then you will see that when you uh, fight against your enemies, then they will not be able to stand in front of you. And this is what these dreams tell us as well. Like uh, these dreams have a very clear message as well that when we uh, enter Middle East, when we enter in fight with India, then we will defeat all those superpowers like Russia and the United States as well. And that's not because we want war, because in the Middle East, they would have started the World War Three, whilst fighting with each other. The battlefield will become the Middle Eastern Muslim countries. And a huge amount of Muslims will be massacred due to their this war. And we will just be defending ourselves at that time as well, because uh, you see, uh, when Ghazwa Hind happens, you see India at one side, then uh, United States and some other allies, they come and join them as well uh, to attack Pakistan. So when that happens, it means that enemy is attacking you. You're not provoking or you ha haven't done anything. When they try to attack you, then when you reply back or when you retaliate, then you obviously finish uh, the job as well properly because they have already done a lot of destruction in Middle East according to dreams as it has been shown in the dreams so when it happens then uh, obviously when you enter the other regions then Allah will give us success so I think that that was the main main uh, message in this in, uh, in this session as well that we wanted to tell you about the dreams about the latest dream which i mentioned in the start of my talk about shirk and its forms and because we we can't get rid of this um topic shirk in all of our conversations because this is the key to success avoiding shirk is key to success so um until and unless we abolish it at all the levels we can't achieve success that's why i keep mentioning shirk again and again and it's been mentioned in brother Qasim's interviews as well because we, we can't, personally, I can't see any way out of all these darknesses and darkness and all these uh, troubles apart from avoiding shirk. So that's the only, I think there are no questions, no more questions. So we will, uh, we, we will uh, try to end this session. I think um, so someone has asked the question that, my family gives too much respect to Gose Azam. Is that wrong? They do Gyarvi Sharif every month and my brother always talk about him. Is this wrong? Um, well, you have to look at the opinion of the scholars in the light of Quran and Hadith. If something which is approved by Hadith, Quran and Hadith, we take it. If it is something additional, then we have to be careful. We can... Uh, obviously pray for the pious people as it's mentioned here then yes definitely we have to pray uh, for those people and uh, because those people change the society as well and they played a big part in changing the society but the way some people pay them tribute and respect like bowing down to them and prostrating to their graves this is shirk definitely even the authentic scholars of your own uh, ideology or sect they will also say Many of them say that this sajda tazimi is shirk. Do not bow down your head to anyone other than Allah, not even to a uh, 
an alive human being, like the way Japanese people meet and greet people. They bow down, kind of, they put their head down, they bend down and they greet someone. That's not allowed in Islam as well. That's something abnormal. You, We as Muslims, we do not do that, inshallah. So respecting someone is okay, but not to go, go to extremes because that's not is the way of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, obviously, we all respect Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani. His uh, teachings are mentioned in the by the authentic scholars. He was himself a great uh, muballigh and scholar of his own time. He, he wasn't a normal person like anyone else. There is he's remembered till today as well. And there, the, there are uh, there were examples of his honesty and his uprightness, which were taught to us in our textbooks as well. And obviously history is witness to his greatness throughout these um, so many hundred of uh, years or so many centuries. So we, we cannot just say that he, he wasn't, uh, he doesn't deserve that respect. Yes, but you do not go against the Quran and Sunnah when you give respect to someone. Um, that's all I would say. Um, I think uh, it's enough for today and uh, we will end the session. If there's another session about anything, we will post the updates on the social media. We will post the updates on different groups and pages and you will see that as well. So you can join us again. Um, for now, I would like to take uh, your leave today and then uh, finish this session. Uh, Jazakallah khair for listening to us and paying attention and uh,